This is going to be a short tutorial on how to use plickers. First what you're going to need to do is open up a web browser. I'm going to open up Firefox. You can use Chrome or Safari depending on your computer or any other web browser for that matter. We're going to go to plickers.com and I have already created an account but I'll sign out so that you can see what it's going to look like. So if you just go to plickers.com for the first time you'll see this page and you can scroll down and read some information about it but what you're going to need to do is sign up for an account. So you'll click sign up, you'll give them your first name, last name, I used my school email and I picked a password and then I clicked sign up. Once you've signed up you can then sign in. So I'll sign in. Now you'll see a screen that looks like this only if this is your first time signing in you won't you will not have any questions. These are all questions that I've created and I'm going to delete a couple. And they're easy to delete. Um, but before you start creating questions, you're going to want to create a class. So in order to do that, you can click on Classes. And I created a class. I'm going to delete it now. Actually, I'll delete all my classes and then show you how to set it up from scratch since these are old classes that I used last year. Okay, so you should see something like this. What we're going to do is add a new class and give it a name. I'm going to call this Technology 3rd and 4th Grade. And I'm going to pick a year. Um, it only lets you pick one year. Since I teach third and fourth grade at the same time, I'd have to pick one of those or I can click other. Um, but I'm just going to pick third grade because I have third and fourth grade. And the subject, um, you'll pick your subject. I guess the closest thing for me would be computers for technology class and then you can give it a color and then click Save. And then it automatically opens you up into that class. And at this point you're you're gonna need to add your students. So I can and you'll just type them in first name and last name. So I can type in um, Jim Smith and hit enter and it adds Jim and it assigns Jim a card and I'll show you what the cards are in a minute but after you um, add all your students and it assigns them a card then you'll need to print print the cards and cut them out and I'll talk about that in a minute so we'll have Fred um, Fred last name White. I'm just making up some names. Gary Stevenson. Sam Brown. Okay, and it's already assigned these students specific cards. I think you can change if you drag a different card if you want to change a card for a different student. Um, you can do that. Um, what I did last year because I had small classes is I actually gave each student in every class a different number which you can do or you can reuse the cards. So for technology third and fourth grade I can have my cards one two three four and then if I created another class I could also give students in that class the same card and I would just collect those cards and then redistribute them when when another class comes in um, 
but if you print off all 63 cards that may cover your entire caseload and then you could actually give um, just like third and fourth grade uh, numbers 1 through 15 and then fifth and sixth you could have 16 through however many um, I'll let you decide how you want to do that or you can print off multiple sets and just reuse the numbers um, depending on how you want to organize it but once your um, roster is complete you can print it and that way you can have that on hand so you know which student gets which card um, while we're talking about cards let's actually take a look at the cards so I'm gonna click on cards now you can buy cards on amazon.com or you can print your own your print your own if you have a lot of students you may want to print the expanded cards and you can print the standard size which would be two cards per sheet and then you cut those out or you can print large cards if you want which would be a full sheet so one card per sheet so that's what a large card would look like and then standard would be two cards per sheet and you cut those out um, I prefer the standard it uses less paper and then I can use less laminate uh, lamination sheets when I because I like to laminate them so they last longer so after you print your cards well let's take a look at the cards again um, well decide if you need standard if you only need 40 cards or if you need 63 okay so this is an example of one of the cards and you'll notice a few things you'll notice that it has the number one on it and the next card has number two and it this goes all the way up to 63 so there's 63 unique cards that you can choose from and then you'll also notice that there's four letters you have an A B C and D and this is how the students will answer your questions so you can ask either multiple choice or true and false questions and depending on how they're holding their card that's when you scan the classroom that's gonna uh, determine what their answer is so if they hold up the card with the A at the top that means they are answering A for the question if they rotate their card so B is at top at the top they're answering B for the question and you'll notice that when you um, when you're actually scanning the classroom you'll be able to get all of their answers all at once so that's what the cards look like now let's look at questions so if we go to the library that's where all of our questions are and you're gonna need to create some questions so I'm gonna click on new question and I can type my question here now here you can either type the entire question or if you're um, doing a practice test or re or a review where you actually have all of the questions typed in advance you can just call it number one um, for chapter five review or chapter five practice test whatever your document is that way you don't have to type out every single question all you have to do is select the correct answer so if number one for my chapter five review if the answer is B I would just click B and then save and if I want to do the entire thing I can click save and create new and then it'll create a new question and to make it faster instead of having to even type that out so question two for chapter five review what I can do is highlight that question and hold down control C and that will copy it and then on the next question I can do control V to paste it and just change the two to a three so I've copied it now and now let's say the answer is a so I'll click a and then save and create new now since I copied it I can do control V to paste 
and change the number 2 to a number 3 and then put whatever the correct answer is and then save and I can keep on doing that and it adds those questions to my library now if I want to use those three questions for my technology third and fourth grade class for that day what I can do is add that question to the class now it's only showing one option here because I deleted all my other classes so if you have multiple classes when you click on add to queue it'll show you all of your classes that you can choose from so I'll add those three questions to my third and fourth grade queue and now now it's saved so if I go to that class Oh, here I need to if I go to the library and I click on third and fourth grade it shows me the questions here and um, you can do that um, every day or just for your chapter reviews um, but what's nice is when you install the app on your phone you can click on live view on the computer and when you select a question on your phone it'll show the results on your live view on your computer so if you have your projector on and you use your app on your phone this is this is where kind of the magic happens is on the live view after you um, use this in class later on you can get some reports and you can filter by the class or by grade level or um, you can save reports this is something that they've been working on um, it's a pretty good tool to use I hope you found this tutorial useful um, at least to get you started but the two things you need to do is create um, create your sign-in and then you have to download the app to your phone in order to use this your phone or an iPad um, some sort of device and if you have any other questions please contact me and let me know